Sports. Eyes on a second straight title. Welcome back to sports, everyone. I'm Chaz Messman. The Holtville Vikings won the CIF San Diego section Division Two, excuse me, Division Five AA title last year, and they've just rolled through everyone on their schedule so far this year. However, with that and the new playoff format brings a step up in competition as playoff time approaches. And currently, Holtville is slotted for the top seed in Division Three, and there's a good chance that they're going to squeeze up into Division Two. But before any of that playoff talk, the 8-0 Vikes needed to take care of business tonight as they welcomed in the 2-7 Palo Verde Yellow Jackets opening drive fourth down. The Vikings going to run a double reverse pass. Raul Braseno hits Alan Carrillo along the near sideline. Carrillo dives into the end zone for the touchdown. How about the guts from Jason Turner on that call? Next possession, first play for Palo Verde. Christian Richards on the handoff, but he puts it on the ground. And the Vikings recover. Ensuing drive, Alonzo Cuevas going for it all, looking for Alan Carrillo, but the ball is broken free. Jared, or excuse me, that's Kenneth Salazar on the breakup. But Holtville would not be stopped as Enrique Armash punches that one in following his big O line on first and goal for the score. To the second now, Holtville up 22-0. Salazar on the handoff. He cuts it through the Viking defense. And that'll be a first down. Little spark for that PV offense as they'd march right down to the four-yard line on fourth and goal. Enrico Ramirez tries the pass, but it falls incomplete, and they turn it over. And that Viking O almost inevitable at this point. Armas caps off a 96-yard drive with his second touchdown of the night. The Jackson's D was a little bit better in the second half, but Holtville still cruises to a 38-0 victory. Over to the volleyball court now. We go to Brawley for senior night for the Wildcats ahead of a massive matchup against Imperial. Winner gets the advantage in playoff seedings as these are two top IVL teams as those playoffs approach. Wildcats leading this one two sets to one and the Wildcats would finish things off here with that one to make it two to one and that would get their 25th win of the season. These two squads now finish as co-champions of the IVL. The passing of Fernando Valenzuela is still very tough for many to deal with, especially in Mexicali, where Valenzuela played with his last team, Los Aguilas, from 2004 to 2007, leaving behind a great legacy. Our own Abraham Mertana reports. Fernando Valenzuela's number with the Los Aguilas was retired in November 2010, three years after his retirement. Eduardo Mesa, with Los Aguilas Media Relations team, was the play-by-play -play announcer when he met El Toro in 2004. He remembers him as a quiet and wise man. Un hombre, eh, he was a passionate man. He seemed to be shy, but once you talk to him, he was a very open person and loved to play in Mexico, especially in Mexicali. Abierto, que le encantaba jugar. Fernando Mania expanded to the Mexican baseball stadiums, and it was a delightful to see him pitch in Mexico where he left a footprint for future generations. Without a doubt, his desire to succeed. He was born without anything and made it to the top. He was a role model and ended being a baseball team owner. So he was a role model to all the Mexicans. He gave us a positive message that we can reach our goals if we fight for them. He came from the rural area of Navojoa and worked very hard to become a baseball phenomenon. Para llegar a ser lo que fue un fenómeno dentro del béisbol. Aguilas de Mexicali was his last team, and he will remain as the greatest Mexican baseball player of all time. La imagen, the image of Fernando Valenzuela will stay forever in the El Nido de los Aguilas, and the fans enjoyed having him here in Mexicali. Disfrutó realmente tener al fenómeno Fernando Valenzuela Aguilas de Mexicali will honor Fernando Valenzuela with El Toro series that will include a pregame ceremony Friday night when they open their home series against Hermosillo. Reporting in Mexicali, Abraham Retana. Game one of the World Series kicks off tomorrow night. Jack Flaherty will be on the mound for the Dodgers. Meanwhile, Garrett Cole has the ball for the Yankees. Also, don't forget a huge matchup out on the high school football field. The Imperial Tigers with the opportunity to complete the giant killer sweep against Brawley will be there. We'll be at games across the desert southwest on Friday Night Lights, so make sure to tune in for that. See you guys then.